Right guys, welcome back. So, today, I'm going to try and get this thing started. There's a few little bits and pieces we've got to do. Most of it's there. Um, I'm going to take you for uh, a little walk around and we'll we'll see what I've done um, in the last sort of couple of weeks. Um, and then, yeah, we'll uh, put some petrol in it and see if it'll start. So, yeah, let's go and have a look. Right guys, so, since the last video, um i have done the radiator so i've got a new radiator from tom over at uh, k parts holland um he sent me a really good condition um i'm not too sure what what the difference is with this one this has a thicker core than my last radiator my last radiator finished kind of like back here whereas this one is a good probably nearly two inches thick so that'd be great for cooling but yeah, it's, it's just a, a different radiator, so I'm not too sure what the difference there is. But anyway, I, um, I went over this one. Luckily, Tom, when he... I, I don't know if he does this for all of them or just did it for me, but he put that radiator in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, so the inside of it is is brand new. It's absolutely immaculate. There's nothing in there whatsoever. Um, and all the fins are completely straight. It's, yeah, I mean, there was a little bit of um, paint or scuffing on the outside but i painted it so it doesn't really matter so that radiator is as good as new um and also um i've fitted it with a um a spow fan um so a, an upgraded fan so it's, it's slightly quieter i think um but it, it pulls more cfm and it's slimmer so it actually gives me a little bit more room behind the fan. Um, so the other thing you might notice is I now have an exhaust. So I've been working on this one for, for quite some time. This collector uh, is actually uh, my own design. So I actually went through the, the design process of um, working out where all of the, uh, the runners should sit um, according to the original sort of style of exhaust. So if, if you look at an original case silencer, they're not just four in an equal pattern. They're two are close together and two are far apart. So that's what I've tried to do with this one. But what I've also tried to do is try and make it as compact as possible to try and get as tight up in there as possible. I keep saying possible. Um, and then what I've done is I've got a, um, this is actually a silence art from AliExpress, uh, and it was 20 quid. So, but the quality of it is, is, is perfect for what I want. Um, it's not, it's not on there properly yet. Um, I still need to decide whether I'm going to cut some channels in this and put a clamp around it or put the springs on it. Um, but it's not, you can see it's not, not quite tight. So I need to need to fettle that, but that's that's nearly there. Um, but it it will do for today's startup. Uh, and the other thing you might notice is I've made a box that goes kind of under the seat. Now um, I'll put a picture on the screen, um, and you'll you'll see that this gap was um, was empty. Now the traditional cafe racer. That's the idea. You want that triangle window at the back empty and void of uh, of anything. The problem with this bike is where it has this profile on the back um, and it's got this massive empty void here, it kind of makes this being empty look a little bit stupid. So what I've done is I've 3D printed this box. Uh, and as you can see, the battery's in there at the moment, and the battery's got loads of room. This will be the new battery box, so the battery won't live in the um, the seat hump anymore. It will live under here, um, and I can possibly move the ECU into here as well. I haven't quite decided on that yet, but yeah, the, the, the battery will definitely be in here. So, yeah, that is new, different. So that, once I've finished, it, it does actually live slightly higher up it's just not bolted in at the moment um once i finish that um i'm going to either make it out of carbon or cover it in carbon i haven't decided either way it's going to be carbon so today to start it 
we need to put fuel in this. Um, I've hooked up the uh, the ignition key so I can turn the bike on and off. So if we start it and it runs away. Um, I can just kill it and it's, you know, we're not going to blow it up. My issues with today is I don't have coolant. I have ordered coolant, it's just not turned up. Also, I've ordered gearbox oil, it's not turned up. Um, so, yeah. Um, I can only start it, let it run for a little bit, and then I'll have to kill it, um, otherwise it will get too hot. So, what I do need to do is put fuel in this. Now, um, I've got it off the bench, uh, off the bench, off the bike, um, because if I put fuel in it and it pisses out for some reason, I don't want it going all over the bike. So, I'm going to put fuel in this. Fingers crossed it doesn't leak. Um, and then it can go onto the bike. So, also for today, what you're going to notice is I've got an old car battery up here. Um, it's no good for starting a car, but it works brilliantly on the bike. So I'm going to be hooking that up to that. So you're going to see a dirty great car battery hanging off the side of this thing. Um, it's, it's fine to start it. There is 12 volts is 12 volts. Um, there is no harm in putting a car battery on a bike. Um, just they don't fit. Um, and they just carry a lot more amp hours. Um, so yeah, I'm going to crack on. Um, I'm going to set you up on the tripod and let's see if we can get this thing started. Right guys, so this is it. Everything is connected. Uh, the I put the fuel in, no leaks. Uh, all the fuel lines are connected. Tank's plugged in. I'm gonna switch it on. Um, we need to try and get the fuel pump to prime. So what that's gonna involve is pressing the um, starter. So ignition is on. Um, so let's see. Okay, no fuel pump. Right guys, so this didn't go to plan. Um, the connector that goes between the tank and the loom is dodgy. So it has to be in a certain position for the, uh, for the fuel pump to work. Because I went to start it and no fuel pump. It would turn over, no fuel pump. But now um, I've disconnected the clutch safety switch. So I now get that. Now what I need to do is build fuel pressure. So I'm going to hold this on and hopefully we'll build fuel pressure and fuel will come back into the tank from the overflow. Right, so fuel is now in the system. Do I have any leaks? That's the thing. So, looking at this, no leaks from any of the injectors, which is good. Nothing coming out of the fuel lines. Great. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to put the starter motor um, back on because um, that's how I, I did all this, just in case you're wondering. I literally just took the wire off the starter motor, wrapped the end in insulation tape, and then hit the button, and yeah, it all works. Thinks it's working, but it's, it's not. So the... The fuel system should be primed, so yeah, um, let's see if it'll start. Well that ain't bad. Um, so there is no choke or fast idle on this thing, 
So I'm going to have to give it a bit of a rev to keep the revs up so it actually idles. Um, so let's give that a quick go. She's idling. Not bad. So there we have it guys, the first start. Um, it runs, it, it idles strangely well considering it's had no tuning whatsoever. I've only adjusted the, um, the throttles as you've seen. Um, so yeah, okay, great. Um, so I've got to top the coolant up, put coolant in it, um, and sort out um, an overflow tank for that. Um, and then I can start doing heat cycles on it and trying to ensure that it's right. But everything looks really promising now. So yeah, that will be it for this one. Um, I hope you like this one, guys. Um, we're, we're nearly there. Um, bolt a few more bits on, paint it, and yeah it'll be it was, it's pretty much there isn't it so yeah as i say uh, i hope you like this one uh if you did please give it a like down below um please consider subscribing if you haven't already and i will see you in the next one cheers guys